okay um so i'm gonna do a up-to-date update <laughs> now um sorry i've been really bad at making videos but i think it's um all kind of taking me for surprise uh how hard this would all actually be so i'm gonna try and just tell you um from start to now what's been going on so before i even knew i was pregnant my body obviously had a surge of whole new hormones and i don't think it coped with it very well <laughs> um because i started to have really bad sleep apnea again where i'd have wake up 23 times in the night something like that and it would go on for a couple of weeks um when I had that, I really just kind of wait it out and wait to sort of pass out. I have some sips of water and and just wait to run asleep and just sleep through the night. I mean, it's it's just one of the most awful, terrifying things having sleep apnea. Um, and then that calmed down. And then uh, I'm going to try and give you a quick run through because I'm really aware I only have 15 minutes. So I'm just trying to squeeze it all in. Um, so then when the sleep apnea calmed down, I was okay for a couple of weeks. And then I got hit with just the most extreme chronic fatigue I've had since I first got diagnosed. Um, that was the only other time I've had it that bad. And... Uh, yeah, this was really extreme, so that really knocked me sideways. <laughs> um, and I still have that, but I think I'm slowly in the last week, and I'm 13 weeks pregnant now in my 14th week. Um, and it's only in the last week that is, I'm just, I still get it really bad, but that it's just starting to get a little bit better where I'm able to walk the dog again and see friends and things like that um and then I got hit with the morning sickness and at this point I knew that I was pregnant um and uh, the morning sickness oh my god uh, that's really taken me by surprise I feel sick 24-7 every minute of every day and sometimes it's extremely bad and I'm heaving and heaving I've only been sick a couple of times but it's just horrible not being able to be sick because you're never getting the relief so you're always feeling that moment just before you're sick that horrible horrible moment when you know you're about to be sick you feel that all the time and it's uh oh no it's not nice at all it's really hard and really exhausting and that really took me by surprise because usually i have a really strong stomach <laughs> so to feel this sick is like alien to me it's weird um and that is still ongoing i've still got that and with foods are so much food I just don't want to eat and then my sense of smell is so extremely heightened in a really negative way that almost every smell just makes me want to be sick and it doesn't even have to be bad smells just so many smells um and then and that's still a problem with the smells and it's actually causing a lot of problems because smell is a, it's an unavoidable thing so it's a constant problem and causes problems and oh I can't stand it um and then uh what happened after that I was pretty much in bed for a long time because of the extreme exhaustion and the sickness and fatigue and potsiness and everything and obviously my pots has gotten worse again um you know all the symptoms they're uh, heightened again and uh i was doing so well <laughs> before i got pregnant but stupidly i thought maybe i would get away with it and not have 
really bad pot symptoms again, but it's rubbish. I've been totally hit with it. Um, and what else? And then I started to have extreme teeth problems because uh, I have my back teeth because of my wisdom teeth crushing the teeth in front of them and that's been causing a lot of pain and I went to the dentist and they couldn't finish the work. They started trying to do a root canal and they couldn't finish it because my nerves are in really awful positions that they, even with loads of injections to numb everything, they just can't do pain-free dental work. Um, so it always ends up a big palaver and they couldn't finish the work because it was just way too painful. Um, I mean, literally jump out of your chair, screaming your head off, kind of painful, where it's just impossible to stay remotely calm with that kind of pain. Um, so anyway, they had to stop the dental work and um, I had, I think, what was the worst um, pain of my whole life that night and oh my god that was extreme and then just with feeling so crappy anyway and all these other things going on that make you feel so rubbish and then that on top it was just I was really at the end of my tether and of course it always feels like you always feel like how can I take much more yet yeah, we always do because our bodies are really amazing <laughs> and um, that ne the next day the pain calmed down luckily and then about a week later I started to get really extreme migraines and one night I had the migraine so bad that I uh, I always get this when I get migraines where I lose my vision and I can just see like uh, parts of people's faces and stuff so I got that and I wasn't too worried about it because I usually get that and it's not nice it's always a bit you know scary when that happens but it wasn't unusual to me so it was fine and then I started to um lose my memory and that was terrifying but I tried to not panic too much um, however it got worse to the point that it was like I didn't understand the English language anymore um, and I didn't know people's names like my dog <laughs> who's my baby <laughs> and my partner and you know, my mum and my closest friends, I just couldn't remember anyone's names anymore. And um, so my mum and my partner, they called an ambulance and uh, they were completely spun out. They didn't really understand what was going on, especially they didn't know what POTS was either. And then try explaining to an ambulance crew that doesn't know what POTS is you know, try explaining to them what POTS is when you've lost your memory and you don't know how to speak anymore and you don't really understand words. It's just uh, <laughs> not easy. So I had to really rely on my partner and my mum to do all the <laughs> talking for me and the mind reading. They had to really look at me and try and figure out what I was trying to communicate and... Um, and communicate for me and they did really well especially my partner he absolutely knew everything I was trying to get across and put it across for me so that was hard and then I was really sort of um the next day I was a lot better I had my memory back but I was really slow in the head and it just took quite a while to come around from that again it took a few days to sort of be me again and that was so uh, scary but luckily it was just that one time I still had migraines after that um for about a week or something really bad ones really oh, extremely painful ones but at least I didn't get the um the memory loss again 
And then, what happened after that? Um, after that, I think things have been settling a little bit. Oh yeah, then I had, uh, then I had quite a bit of uh, blood loss, not loads, but a little bit. And I, I rang the um, labour unit because my midwife said that is the unit you're supposed to ring if you start to bleed. So I rang the labour unit at the hospital that I'm going to give birth at and uh, they said don't come in straight away, come in tomorrow and we're going to do like a little emergency scan. So we went in the next day and this was our, this happened at about I think 11 weeks pregnant and that scan was the most amazing thing ever. <laughs> um, my partner was completely mesmerised, he couldn't take his eyes off the screen and obviously I was lying there completely panicking, just uh, thinking the worst from the moment that the midwife said well there's definitely um, a little one swimming around in there happily the moment she said that oh. you know the weeks leading up to that had been so hard and so miserable that I just felt so crap on every level and uh, the moment she said that I just was I had a flood of total feeling of pure love come over me and I just cried with relief and uh, it was just amazing and then seeing it there really chilled out sort of rolling around um, it was just incredible and uh, undescribable really and I think you only know what that's like when you've been through it yourself um, and then a week later we had the official proper scan and again that was amazing and since having those scans it's just put everything in perspective and made me realise how feeling this crappy and going for all these horrible things health-wise during this pregnancy is so worth it and for something and it really changes everything once you have the scan so I think if anyone gets pregnant with POTS and they're having a really hard time just wait until you, you have the scan it will really uh, yeah, change everything and put it all into perspective for you. So since then, whenever I'm feeling ill, I feel ill and it's horrible, but I just always hold on to my little um, bean belly <laughs> and remember why I feel like this now. And uh, it always gets me through it. So yeah, it's been a journey. <laughs> And not an easy one, but it's a worthwhile one, and it's not like I'm dying, you know, it keeps changing, so um, I just keep looking forward now. <laughs> anyway, that was my more up to date update in a nutshell. Um, sorry, I have to keep the video so quick at the moment because I can only keep them 15 minutes, so um, I'll try and do another update soon when there's more things. <laughs> to update on. Okay guys, um, thank you.